I've always kind of thought machine learning to be like a very fun thing to work on. The field has such a wide range of needs, and all these kind of needs then drive the design and philosophy for different frameworks. I think one important thing for any framework has always been and will always be diversity. You should be really careful that you address a large set of algorithms. In the 90s, people were using uh, you know, neural nets, right? But then, you know, neural nets kind of disappeared from the, from the community. SVMs became major algorithms for quite a while. I kind of needed like a framework which would do everything at the same time, you know, like super vector machines, neural net, GMMs, HMMs, all in the same kind of you know, modular way and hackable way. So I started Torch. In college, we got our mind baked into don't use neural nets because it's dead. And that's kind of like one of the fun part of machine learning, which is we kind of constantly rethink the technology. And in 2012, Alex Krzyzewski and uh, Jeffrey Hinton's team in Toronto designed this neural net that's like seven layers deep. And they had a breakthrough in image net classification. And the accuracy went from 25% error rate to 15% error rate and that got things really taken off. And so we started building a system called DCAF. Um, it was written in Python, it wasn't really too fast because it was purely based on CPUs. And we had to use you know, GPUs and more system-centric languages such as C and C++. And we figured if it is running faster, we'll call it with fond memories, cafe. I started being more and more active in developing Torch. At some point, Ronan adds me to the repo and he's like, here, you have maintainer access, take the tool forward. Torch was active for about nine, 10 years, but then the field was evolving. The field was changing in terms of what it was pushing. We needed a new tool that could enable these new kinds of research. Researchers excel whenever they have no constraints. They can express any idea possible. So we try to remove those constraints even further with PyTorch. For PyTorch, I think it actually created a very new paradigm of thought, which is using Python and imperative programming to ease people's life. And now we feel like we have a couple different things that work. We had PyTorch, which was incredible for this flexible programming model. We had Cafe 2, which was massive scale. However, we had this huge gap of going from research to production. The first thing that we did was develop Onyx, which is a language that allows us to connect these two frameworks and pass models between them. This is one of the things we learned with Onyx was, let's make sure we design things from the beginning to talk to each other, to be replaceable, to be hackable. Now we get all of the expertise of the Cafe2 community and the PyTorch community working together on the same framework. For AI, the whole field is going from the applications to the modeling, to the software stack, to the hardware mutations. And I think only when we look at the whole stack can we actually make real progress. We are actually teaching each other to figure out what is the best design philosophy for AI software moving forward.